Hi guys, as you log in, we're just going to allow as many people to get in and then I'll do a quick um, a welcome and a few sort of ground rules. Um, but I know it normally takes about 30 seconds for that list to, uh, to build. Oh, it's going fast. Okay, we'll give it another 30 seconds before we get going. Okay, good afternoon, uh, everybody, and welcome to our next uh, webinar, which is on writing an article for your local cricket club website uh, and the local press. Before I introduce our guests, just a couple of quick uh, Grant, please, 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 uh, any questions uh, for the for the two guys, stick them on the Q&A uh, uh, box, which you see is a new uh, tab on top of your screen, and I'll pick them up uh, throughout. Um, and again, thank you so much for all your feedback in uh, putting these extra webinars uh, together. Um, we are really, really fortunate. We've got uh, two guys who both have uh, played cricket in, in Essex uh, over, over the years, uh, and both have worked worked in East London in their professional uh, career as, as, as journalists. Uh, firstly, I'll uh, introduce Lee uh, Powers. Uh, Lee Powers is the group uh, editor at Archant, which covers over uh, 23, uh, he, so he's, the, he's covering over 23 papers, um, which includes London, uh, Essex, Hertfordshire, Cambridgeshire, uh, and also randomly the Southwest, which we can ask him a little bit more about uh, in, a, in a minute. Uh, and we've also got Paul Newman. Paul is uh, the senior cricket correspondent uh, for the Daily Mail and has also uh, worked over the years uh, in Essex uh, in, in his career as well as uh, being involved in club cricket at Essex. Um, I'll throw the first question to you, uh, Paul, if I uh, can. First of all, welcome and, and secondly, give, give the audience a bit of background uh, on your journalism career to date. Hi, Arthur. Well, thank you very much for, for asking me on. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, um, I grew up in Walthamstow in, in East London. Um, and I uh, started working there um, on, the, on my local paper, actually, the Waltham Forest Guardian uh, in Walthamstow. Um, and the way I did it was um, there was a careers convention at my school, Sir George Monarchs in Walthamstow, that a lot of people may know. Um, and I was very interested in journalism. I wasn't, a, I wasn't a very good sportsman. So the next best thing seemed to be to write about it to me. Um, and um, I was invited in for work experience by the editor of the local paper and started basically covering local football and cricket. Um, Teams like in those days, Leighton Stone, Ilford, Wolfenstow Avenue, Woodford, uh, Leighton Wingate. Um, and I, I used to shadow the main writers there. And then they'd let me do my own reports from about 14, 15 years old, actually. And, um, and Essex cricket was a, was a big part of our, our coverage as well, which was great for me as a, as a young Essex member. I, I got to get in the press box and they let me do reports on Sunday league games, John Black league games in those days. Um, and I got a staff job there at, at 16. Um, very fortunate to be uh, get a job that young, uh, very unusual, certainly be very difficult now, I think. Um, but that's the way it was in those days. Um, so I, I, when I was offered the job, I went for it. I, I, I sort of forgot about any ideas of further education, but thankfully it worked out. Um, and I worked on, um, uh, on the Wolf and Forest Guardian news desk initially, but I didn't like the idea of, um, of news coverage. You know, I remember having to go and knock on someone's door who just whose husband had just been shot and you know ask them how they they felt in, in, in just off Leighton High Road I remember that you know things like that it was it was all very uh, very tough stuff so I wanted to get into sport as quickly as possible they let me work in sport quite quickly um, and and uh, became sports editor there um, and it was great you know I, I covered Leighton Orient um, uh, quite uh, home and away which I which I adored you know Frank Clark was the manager there then and, and had a, a good relationship with him I adore doing that, um, Essex cricket coverage. And also, of course, you know, cricket club coverage was a big part of, of, of what we did. And, and we, we relied on um, submitted reports. In those days, of course, this is a long time ago. So we, we, there's no websites, there's no social media, there's, no, there's nothing like that in those days. So we relied very much on, on, on submitted reports from the likes of, um, of, of your club once did, because we, we branched out to, um, uh, to, to Redbridge, um, but Walthamstow, Chingford, all, all the big lots of great clubs in the area so we tried to give them as as much space as possible and obviously it was it, there were there were limits on space in those days um but but we tried to give them as much space as possible and i, I had a very happy time doing that before i moved into national papers um a, a bit later on 
brilliant and and obviously currently both work i suppose worked in broadsheet and now tabloid so you've got a lovely three-way career if you like so we'll tap into a little bit of that knowledge thank you so much paul uh lee over to you so as i said uh, a sports editor for 23 uh, newspapers but before that how, how did you get into journalism and, and what was your uh, journey to date well uh, grew up in Dagenham went to secondary school Robert Clack um, very few cricket games played on a concrete strip there back in the uh, mid 80s late 80s um, but did my work experience when I was studying GCSEs in what would be year 10 at the Dagenham Post which was just across the road from the school um, then went to the Times when I was studying May levels to do work experience there for a couple of weeks um, on to Nottingham Trent University for a broadcast journalism degree for three years in the early 90s. Come out of that, freelanced for about a year with a TV production company in half this year. Um, then a vacancy came up on the run for Recorder, um, late 96. Got on the staff then, um, worked there for close to three years, um, covering all local sport, um, the non-league scene, um, the local club cricket scene. So I would be up at you know, remember some early trips to Haven Atty Bowers, lovely little Brox Hill Road ground with the view of the uh, of the borough all down below, um, but also off to, you know, Gideon Park up into Harold Wood. All those main sort of Havering clubs. Uh, yeah, we've got, we seem to have lost you there for a second, uh, Leah. Um, you're, no, you're back. Sorry, I didn't come in cool there. Oh, I'm sorry, should have turned That's off. That's all right. Um, no so, yeah, so for a couple of years um, and then back to the Romford Recorder in July 2001, um, been there ever since. Um, in 2013 became the group sports editor for five papers that we covered in East London, so that was Barking, Ilford, Newham, Romford and the East London Advertiser. So all of a sudden started reaching out to more clubs on those patches, all the Ilford clubs that we cover yourself once did. South Woodford, Fives, anyone that's on that patch. Um, also the, the other leagues that sort of play in East London, the Barking and Newham clubs. Um, and in the last sort of few years as well, I did the Hearts uh, titles to my portfolio and then the South West as well. But, you know, uh, an Essex lad, born and bred, um, used to go over to the Valentine's Park festivals when I was younger, getting ABs or after to play and uh, seeing Gucci score a ton in a session, those sort of things. Um, so that's my sort of homeland and having sort of really, you know, come up um, from the run for recorder that, you know, those clubs remain the ones that I'm, you know, closest to, I guess, um, cultivated the, the biggest contacts um, over the last, sort of, you know, best part of 20 plus years. So, yeah, big fan, um, not made a great standard of much to my, you know, of my own, but, you know, big cricket fan and always happy to engage with the clubs and, uh, and get the word out there in the last few years as well. Working closely with the success of the West Coast, so uh, yeah, it's been really good, especially with all the, the local blood coming from playing for us these days. No, brilliant, Lee. We will tap a bit more into your cricket background, which brings me nicely onto onto Paul. Obviously, you, you touched on your early early days as a, as a journalist working in Waltham Forest, but uh, you haven't quite given up your uh, roots involvement in, in in club cricket. How have you kept your close sort of uh, affinity with with club cricket? Well, when I was very young, Arf, I, I played for Walthamstow, uh, just off Wood Street there, a brilliant ground, great club, uh, very good club, um, uh, pretty much just in the Colts section. I did I did captain the under-18s for a little while. That's about as high as I got. Um, and uh, as Lee mentioned there, you know, Valentine's Park, I, I, was, I was another one who grew up watching Gucci dominate at Valentine's Park and Alan Border against Malcolm Marshall, that sort of stuff. Um, and I remember playing there for, for Walthamstow against Ilford, and that was like the... The, the sort of you know that was that was the ultimate for me. I was going to play where I'd seen Gucci and everybody play, and and then a, a very young leg spinner called Nasser Hussain got me out of first ball, so that ruined my Valentine Park experience. But um, there, there we are. He was he was younger than me as well, but he was a bit of an upstart, and uh, that that was me gone. Um, but so I played for Walton so up to eight, under eighteen level. But the, the highest I got, I wasn't very good to be honest. I was a keeper batsman. I wasn't very good. Um, I, I played in the third eleven uh, for Walton so. But um, journalism started taking over as well, actually. And of course, in those days, you know, you were expected to be available on a Saturday and a Sunday. If you were a young young kid trying to make the grade in club cricket, they they expected good availability. And and as soon as you got into journalism, you were you were working weekends. So that that didn't make it very very easy. I don't think I would have got very much higher than the third eleven if I'd stayed, to be honest. But basically, I drifted away. Um, 
started playing uh, cricket in a in a twenty over club uh, companies league when I when I joined the the Walthamstow Guardian. Uh, I got a cricket team together and the early 2020 cricket, of course, you know, we used to play in Chingford and Walthamstow, Lowell Farm uh, near the Walthamstow market. Um, but because we, I could never get enough players each week, I used to bring, uh, bring in friends, really, who, who had played at school, but had sort of drifted away from the game. And and they all got the bug again. So we decided to, to um, launch our own cricket club. And this was about 35 years ago now. It started off uh, bizarrely called Oral Sculpture Cricket Club, which is named after a Strangler song. Don't ask me why. Then we became the Garden Cricket Club because a few of the players started playing in their, 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 uh, one of the players' dad's back garden. And then we realised there wasn't a Chigwell Cricket Club and that was obviously a great name and there wasn't a proper Chigwell Cricket Club, so we changed our name to Chigwell. Uh, and the club's still going, it's still doing well. It plays um, in, a, in, a, in a league. I can't even remember the name of the league now. I, I, I haven't played for many years. Essex, but Essex and Middlesex League? That's the one, yeah, I think it's that one, yeah. 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 Um, I haven't played for, for a long time, but um, they, they asked me to be president last year, which I was very, um, very happy to, to, to accept as one of the founder members. Three of the founder members still play, even though they're, they're older than me. They're getting on for 60 now, so but they're, they're, they still play. Um, and yeah, the club's thriving and it's great and um, it, it helps me keep in touch with local cricket, really. That's brilliant. We won't mention the, uh, the celebrity musicians you have in your cricket club. We'll, we'll keep that to our audience to research. Um, okay. Lee, I'm going to throw the, 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 the key question of, uh, of the webinar, which is, which is, which is in effect, um, as, as, as a sports editor, as, as the cricket uh, correspondent in your earlier, earlier days, when writing a report for both for you, um, from a cricket club perspective or for your own website if you're a, if you're a local club but what advice would you give what's the key structure uh, behind any report you're looking for I mean ideally we're looking for you know good detail that sort of tells the story from behind the scorecard and you know, we can look at a scorecard and and guesstimate you know what's sort of happened in a game looking at you know partnerships that have been built you can work out quite a bit yourself but it's, um, it's the finer detail, like knowing if someone's come off of, you know, a run of four or five ducks to sort of get some vital runs or a guy that's been called up at the last minute on the morning of the game and then he's, he's contributed in a certain way with a couple of key catches out in the deep or whatever. And knowing, knowing those sort of those finer details about, you know, how those catches were taken, was it, you know, down at the ankle, was it a, a dive, was it, you know, a, right above the head? It's, it's just the sort of info that, you know, you're not going to know unless you've seen it with your own eyes. And obviously, you know, the guys don't get out to as many games nowadays. So, you know, if a batsman's batting in a particular way, a load of good, um, a load of good driving or right. pulling right. or whatever, whatever the sort of detail to an innings there might have been. Um, it's, it's understanding the sort of the, what's happened sort of behind those. those uh, so... As much That's as the same. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's switched off. I don't know why. <laughs> you know, we like we like to um, inform and entertain the readers. Um, so you know, it, those sort of finer details are, are always good to know. But before I go to Paul, um, little sort of things like structure, how many words, how do you build the story? What, what's the what's the trick? What's the art behind it? Yeah. Well, now the, I'm sorry, yeah, so sorry. I'm gonna go, I'll go Lee first and I'll come back sorry, to you on, on, on that. Sorry, Paul. Right, yeah, now, nowadays we're fixed at a uh, space for 200, 400 words on a page. Um, so they're the sort of workouts we give out really to people that want to submit reports, 200 or 400 words. Um, obviously, the way we want anything longer. Um, but I don't want people to think, you know, to be sitting there scratching their heads about how to put it together too much because, um, you know, we can work with some, you know, a list of bullet points really and we can then put the meat on both and such um, appreciate that it might not come too easily for people that are trying to write reports um, but if someone can get us a list of details that um, would help flesh out and uh, you know we can build the sentences around that but yeah I mean generally you know you've got to find you've got to decide what angle is from the piece so if that individual that you know has been missing for months because of injury or weddings and holidays then come in and help us get his team over the line and then you know we to have that background is always good. So, yeah, and I'll throw that similar similar to you, Paul, re regarding you know structure. What what do you what what is the key? What's the art that I suppose what the editor wants uh, as well as the reader? Yeah, it's a, it's as much human interest as possible. I think I think I think Lee's described it perfectly. You know, when 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 I did these things, you, you used to say to people, just please tell us things that you can't learn from the scorecard. Really, we can see we can see the scores, we can see what's happened. 
but how did it happen? As Lee said, you've got to bring the eyes to it, really. You know, you've got to describe uh, what happened and also bring some depth to it. Bring us the backstory of, of someone. If, if, is it, as Lee said, is it the end of a long run of poor form? You know, have they, have they, were they injured for a long time? What's, what, what do they do an interesting job that you can bring in it? You know, so it's, I think that, that's always of an interest to people. So and so who, in his, you know, day job does this. Um, here he is scoring his 400 in a row for us. Is it, you know, it, and, and just put put it all into perspective, really. Um, and then I guess do it as concisely as possible as well, uh, really. Um, you don't want to sort of waste words on it, but but you want as much detail that you can't get from the scorecard without um, forgetting the, the the sort of salient facts. Yeah, I'll throw my, my next sort of within that quotes, you know, how important are quotes? And then when you're seeking quotes, and Lee, I'll go to you first again, when you're seeking for quotes, what, what in effect are, are you trying to get um, when, when, a, when a player who scored 100 or taken a fiver gives you a quote? It's, it's generally like, you know, it's the how does it feel, you know, to hit that landmark or produce that sort of performance. Um, I mean, over the last few years, we've tried to get the reporters to sort of a bit more often for that sort of some preview quotes and, and use those more so than the, sort of, um, the bare dish from a match touch. But yeah, when you're um, when you're trying to get a line from a player, it's um it's, it's to get the feeling, you know, the, of how they, how they are afterwards, you know, uh, that personal touch and what it means to them to have to have put that uh, together on the play. Uh, fair, and, and, and probably throw that same question to you, Paul. And I know, uh, as as a sort of journalist in international sport, you know the press conference or the pre-match uh, captain sort of comments at the toss, but press conference at the end for tomorrow's uh, paper is is obviously important. W what are you looking for? What are you searching for? Something other than the obvious, I guess. Really, you know, uh, these these guys um, certainly international level are so well media trained now that they can come out with a lot of stuff that's not particularly interesting. And and the key, I think, is not wasting it on, on obvious quotes, you know, I always sort of do a, in my mind a sort of flip test. Would it be more interesting if they said exactly the opposite of what they said? You know, I'm delighted to score a hundred. Well, it'd be a better story if you was, if you were upset to score a hundred, you know, so, so don't, don't waste it. Don't, don't wait, only use quotes that enhance something. I think, I mean, I, I know uh, from our paper's point of view, you'd probably have a quote story separately to the match report. I wouldn't include any match, any, any quotes in a, in a, in a match report on a, on a day's play of England, um, we'd have a separate story of what's been said in the press conference afterwards. If you are combining the two, which of course you, you do in some instances, um, don't waste space with, with um, anodyne quotes really and, and obvious quotes, you know, just always try to make sure that they enhance the story. If you, if you are, if it is a local player who's, who's had a, say he's had a terrible time, in, you know, with injury or, or even in his private life and he's coming, He's coming out of this to, to, to score 100 or take seven wickets. Um, tell us a bit about that. Tell us what they've been through. Um, tell us, you know, um, what, their, what their background is, what, how long they've been playing. Is this their first big score? Uh, and and I would make the quote, make sure the quotes relate to that really than, than just the obvious. I was delighted to score runs. Or I was delighted to take wickets and really pleased that we won the game. So avoid that sort of stuff, really. Yeah, no, that's, that's super, super helpful, actually. That and, and makes absolute sense. Um, Lee, I suppose um, your your pen bug, uh, your your sort of bugs, if you like, the ones you don't like uh, as 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 a editor. Um, what what would they be, and what would you really, if you were to give your tips of what I really want from uh, local clubs, what would that be? Um, what we see quite a lot of is uh, reports come through, and you might be missing a first name, or you might only get a first name and a surname. Or you're going to get a nickname sent instead of either of those. So you're then having to go back to, you know, to get the proper information because I appreciate that guys want to put something together for the web, for the club. Um, so, you know, the banter element might be fine for that platform. But if we want to put stuff up on our website or in the paper, you know, we need to be reporting the proper information. So we need both names, no nicknames, please, unless it's, you know, a cracker that, you know, has got some sort of relevance. But generally, you know, we're trying to tell the, the news properly as such. So, um, yeah, making sure we've got both names of people that, um, that you want to mention. Um, not because that might not always be obvious from a, from a card anyway. So that's the main one. And um, other than that, we can sort of work with whatever gets sent, really. You know, as long as it's not going to run to like a thousand words because, you know, that's only going to take the writer too long and then it's going to take us too long to edit it back. So that's why, you know, the, the word count guide is always... Um, 
is always a key sort of uh, pointer to raise as well that you know that was one of the, the lessons I was taught when I was on work experience at the time you were given a word count you know you, you stick to that so uh, yeah bear that in mind uh -huh. I'll take that question a little bit further, keeping it lo local uh, as, as the local papers. Um, what is uh, timelines? Now, obviously, Saturday, Sunday is your usual recreational league games. Uh, your website is obviously active all the time, but your, your local press uh, for whatever paper you're working with will have their cutoff date. Is there a rule of thumb you like uh, club cricket um, members to, to share, to work with, rather? Um, I mean, it's, it's tricky because, uh, the, the, you know, the papers we put out in, you know, the East London Essex area have all got different uh, deadlines. Um, so the, the Barkingham editions go to print sort of Tuesday afternoon, um, just after lunch. So the earlier we get that information in, the better. Ilford on a Wednesday afternoon and Rumford on a Thursday afternoon. So you've got a bit more time to play with. But, you know, the quicker guys can turn stuff around and get it to us, then, you know, ideally we can get it up online at the early part of the week. So the idea would be that, you know, we can work with reports to start off with and then maybe run reaction pieces in the middle of the week and then preview pieces at the end of the week looking ahead to the next weekend. So, you know, the, the yeah, earlier the better. I, I, Bishop I, I, going to be doing this are probably going to be doing it on lunch breaks or what have you. But the earlier in the week, the better, especially, you know, if you've played on the Saturday, you don't really want to be waiting until Wednesday to hear about the sort of finer detail. So... Yeah, anything to add to that, Paul, from your perspective? No, it's, it's interesting. You know, when, when I worked in local papers, obviously you had to wait till the, the following Thursday before it come out. It, you know, the, the, it, it's, it's just so different now, isn't it, to, to get it up as quickly as possible. You would think if the game's on at the weekend, as Lee was saying, you, could, you would hope to get those up on the website as soon as possible after the games, wouldn't you? And, and, that, and when, when it's fresh in people's memories. Um, just adding to what Lee was saying about nicknames or whatever, I think accuracy is a big thing as well. You know, just always make sure you spell names right. Um, my first chief sub-editor who, who at the Daily Mail, a guy called Ken Wilson, uh, you had to write to him for shifts and he spelt Wilson with two L's, which was very unusual. And his first big test was if anybody just sent him a letter asking for shifts and spelt Wilson the conventional way with one L, that, that was them gone because they hadn't checked that he spelt his name differently, you know. So it, it always check that you've got your you've spelt names right. As, as Lee said, always give full names. If someone has got a, uh, an interesting nickname, put that in as well and explain why they're called that maybe if, if it's suitable for a family publication. But, but, but you know, always, always, check, always check for accuracy and, and, and figures. You know, figures in cricket are, are so important, aren't they? Um, make, sure you get the, make sure you get everything right. If the bloke has had a run of 50s, find out it, whether it is 550s or 650s or, or whatever. Uh, but most importantly, you know, get their name right. And, and um, if, they're, if they've got connections like yourself with a, a, a twin who plays as well, you know, if, if, if they're brothers or whatever, you know, tell us about the family connections and, and anything which adds to that human interest, really. Yeah, it's easy. Ask all the runs. It's, it's pretty easy, that one. Um, <laughs> yeah, player, yeah. <laughs> I lied to myself, mate. Um, and also, obviously, just to add to that opposition names, it's amazing how many times people go, yeah. you know, they're number three or... Exactly. exactly. Take, take the effort to find those sort of details out because it, it really does help. Um, it, it helps the people, you know, working on uh, in, in the offices, but it also just makes the, the report much more, much more attractive to the reader, doesn't it? If, if there's proper detail in there, just because the, the opposition player is not known to you, you know, make the effort to find out how he spells his name and, and anything else interesting about him, really. Yeah, thank you, guys. Um, change this question a little bit. I'll go to you first uh, on this one, uh, Paul. The concept of, of recruiting, and I, and I say that, you know, what, what would you say to anyone watching the webinar now in regards to trying to find someone in the club? C classic, most clubs, it's the same guy who is the chairman, rolls the outfield um, and whatnot. Is, is there a way a club can re recruit internally certain skills, characters, characteristics they can look for uh, to get yeah. a report? Uh, there must be people in the club who, who are keen on doing this, I would have thought. You know, maybe, maybe a youngster, maybe in my, in my case, when I was 14 or 15, you know, I, I was just mad keen on, on writing about it and doing as much reports as I can. There must be people like that within a, within a club. They don't have to be young, you know, but, but I, I'd, I'd say find someone who's got a real interest in it, who really, really enjoys, enjoys writing. Uh, maybe, you know, ideally as, as someone who's got a flair for it. They don't have to be a professional, obviously, um, or want to be a journalist as such. But someone who's going to take a, a real interest in it, a real pride over doing it, who'll do it, you know, religiously and won't let it drift, as Lee said, to Wednesday or Thursday when it's a two, you know, when it, it's, it's, it, the, the game's almost a week old. And someone who really sees that as their thing within the club, not the poor person, as you say, which every club has got, who, who does so many jobs 
um, and I'll, I'll, I better try and you know spend five minutes on doing the report as well as their umpteenth job of the week for the club. If you can find someone within not necessarily the cult section, but I think in many ways it, it's nice if it's a younger person um, who's who's very keen and that's their job. Um, and they can they can you know ring up the the captain of the first eleven or whatever to find out more details uh, that they haven't got from from themselves seeing the match if they're not at the match or whatever. Um, but um, you know just find someone who's going to take pride over it really and and um, and do a good job because if the copy comes in and it's really nice and it's it's well written and it and it's not too long and it's got all the relevant details in there it's 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 a dream for sports editors and 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 you'll you'll be amazed how quickly your club will. We'll, we'll 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 gain great coverage, you know, and they'll they'll get to the top of the tr top of the tree of uh, top of the list of people you want to help and promote because uh, they're 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 helping you. Absolutely, Lee. Do you want to add anything to that? Yeah, I mean, you know, I was I was lucky that I knew from an early age I wanted to be a journalist. So um, you know, I would file my sort of little football reports to the local paper every week. So yeah, if if there's youngsters involved um, at clubs that are maybe doing media studies at school, or they you know they're particularly interested in in media, um, then encourage that. And like I say, don't be daunted by the fact that they need to sit there and write a thousand word masterpiece. It could literally be. A very short snapshot, 200 words, or worst case scenario, you know, just six, eight, ten pertinent points that you know help back up um, the scorecard details that you know give us a bit more background, so we can actually then get to write in the piece ourselves at the other end. But you know, without those um, raw materials, it's it's tough at our end to then put the stuff together in the first place. So, yeah, I just encourage any youngsters out there to. Um, to, to, to give it a shot, give it a shot, you know, um, read as much as they can to sort of uh, maybe get a bit of an idea, you know, websites or, you know, the national papers um, expand their vocabulary and you find that, you know, it may well help um, support some school work they have got to do. So, um, yeah, just, uh, just, just impress on the youngsters that um, it's a chance really to, uh, to practice a craft that they might end up taking into a career. Um, get their names seen, you know, happy to give bylines to people if they're going to submit stuff and uh, want to be taking it seriously. So, yeah, and, and I'm going to probably just change the question a little bit and go to you first, Lee. We, we've obviously spoke about reports, but you've been very supportive around clubs that are trying to promote uh, events, the alternative cricket team being, being one of them um, from a county sort of perspective. Um, what, what changes when, you're, uh, when a club is contacting you to say, look, we want to promote an event or, or something like that? What, 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 would, uh, what would you look for uh, to get the maximum sort of support? Yeah, well, I'm more than happy to help clubs get a bit of exposure for any sponsors that help in there. If they're, you know, good causes, they're trying to raise money um, for charities and what have you. So it's, it's the standard, you know, what is it? Where is it? When is it? Why are you doing it? Those sort of questions, you know, involved. So um, again, it can only, you know, we could, we could deal with just a few sort of uh, snippets in the main. Um, if, it's, if it's prior to an event, it would still have to maybe have a photograph. Um, if not, then you want to photograph post events to sort of help publicize the fact that this has taken place um but yeah again it, you know it's, it's just the key information make sure that the right people are going to be name checked um and the spots out correctly obviously um but yeah if if companies sort of putting their hand in pocket to help clubs you know we're more than happy to um give that a bit of exposure to uh, you know help no, that, that, that's brilliant, Lee. And, and Paul, I might just twist the question a little bit um, without at all accusing any organisation to get promotion, like, like the Emirates, Old Trafford or, or whatnot. Um, but how, how, what, what's the, I'll probably give them one little tip, but what's a little tip to get the sponsors uh, in the press that you could, you could maximise or, or utilise? That's a good question, actually, because um, we haven't got a, a hard, at the mail, we haven't really got a hard or fast policy on that one. But it came up quite recently in that the two venues we're going to see used for all international cricket this summer, it seems, are the Aegeus Bowl and Old Trafford. And, and that's what we were calling them in copy. You know, the Aegeus Bowl, even though, you know, I, to me, it's the Rose Bowl, which is a much nicer name. But it, it, that's, that's what it's called now. And you can't really call it the Rose Bowl anymore. Um, but um, the, the press officer at uh, Lancashire, a really nice guy, sent me a note saying, look, you know, I understand why, but we are the Emirates Old Trafford. Um, and, and we'd be really grateful if you, if, you could, if you could call it that as well, really, because you're, you're, you're saying the Aegeus Bowl and Old Trafford and you're leaving out our sponsor. And obviously you do that because it's an iconic name, isn't it? And it's easier to just say Old Trafford, really, because that's what everybody knows it has. Whereas the other place, the Aegeus Bowl, you can't just call it the Bowl. So you, you, you name the sponsor. But... The sponsors are obviously incredibly important in sport and incredibly important in cricket. 
I find the best ones. You know, I've worked with lots of sponsors over the years who sponsor test cricket, for instance. And the best ones are the ones who are not pushy, who understand the media, who understand you can't just say the, the first Cornhill test match or the first, you know, Empower test match. Um, they, 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 a lot, most of them would like you to mention in copy, but the best ones would, would, will understand that you, you can't just sort of like emblazon it everywhere. It has to be quite subtle. Um, and, and I think you're more, you're more inclined to, to help. The, the, the guy at Lancashire was so nice about it and made such a valid point. And he also understood where we were coming from because Old Trafford is such an iconic venue that he realised why we weren't doing it. But, but, but since then, we've made an effort to make sure we do call it Emirates Old Trafford, certainly in the first mention. And I think if sponsors sort of try and, and, and understand the media, um, most media won't have, a, won't have an issue in, 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 in sort of trying to help them back, really, because they are so important to... To cricket the oval we, we keep on having to remember now it's the the Keir oval you know that's it hasn't helped that the ovals had a few different names about the foster's oval what else we had there was there was something out uh, the brit the brit oval wasn't it yeah, and then here yeah. so the worst thing you can do is forget the, like, the sponsor and start calling it the brit oval or the foster's yeah. oval again you know but it's better just call it the oval than that but one of the most famous names in cricket doesn't sound quite right when you call it the Keir oval but you've got to appreciate how important their money is to Surrey and to the Oval and, and, and call it that when, when you can, really, um, to, to, to try and give something back to the sponsors. No, thank you. That's very good advice. Lee, I might throw you into there. A few tricks, but I don't know, man of the match, you can maybe name it under the local curry house. Is there anything that you could put onto the local papers to keep supporting uh, or pushing club sponsors? Um. Well, anything like that. I mean, I know um, the um, Mr. guys at Wimwack and their team are on that after, you know, local businesses that were sponsored by them. So, and actually, um, down in the southwest, actually, so down there, do they just mention, they, they mention the fact that uh, their man and matches are sponsored by certain, you know, local businesses. So, yeah, any any little elements like that that, um, that help, um, you know, the, obviously, these people are helping these clubs and uh, it's, it's, it's just only a tiny thing, but, um, you know, to, to put their name in print is, is no big deal. I don't see it at our end uh, on that local channel. So uh, yeah, just, just, just include it and uh, it'll always be given, you know, due consideration. Brilliant. And Lee, I'll throw the next one to you as well. But obviously uh, in COVID-19, normally it would have been the summer cricket season. I'd have been nicking off for naught again on a Saturday and, uh, and getting the rightful abuse. But what's, what's kept the cricket uh, busy and what are you seeking right now if you had an audience, which we are covering Essex and Hertfordshire and, uh, and other parts, what, what advice would you say in regards to getting information and stories to you in the current climate? Um. Just, just keep. I mean, luckily, some sort of people are now um, holding net sessions. Um, obviously, the, you know, the alternative cricket the event has taken place. We have um, sports. Well, we we did the stuff with the Essex boys, donating the uh, the equipment with supporting humanity, the meal driver. Sorry, um, and we've done the alternative cricket tea stories in Romford the last couple of weeks uh, with Harold Wood and Raynham. So, any other clubs that have got stuff, you know, now happening, um, get the information to us. Um, it's very hard you know, to. The amount of clubs we're covering to be just um, just double checking every sort of now and again to see what might be posted on their website or what might be on their social media accounts. Um, it's always better if stuff can just come to our fingertips. Uh, I don't want to sound lazy, but um, it's, it's trying times at this point um, to sort of juggle quite a bit. So uh, yeah, just don't be um, don't be shy. Any information you want to share, um, challenges. Some of the other clubs earlier this summer had um, their rest nights, quiz nights, um, so I should sort of pick up a few bits like that. Um, and I've also started listening to some podcasts and turning some of that into uh, information for, for businesses as well. So it's about the can take plan on a regular basis. Um, we've been looking at features, so we've been picking out a few um, older members from across some of our clubs, running sort of long back pieces with those, just sort of keep pretty visible in the pages. Um, hopefully we will have some action later in the, in the summer, but for the time being, you know, um, any club that's got a story to tell about or, you know, an event, and, um, yeah, by all means, please do get in touch. Yeah, I'll probably repeat, we lost you just a little bit, Lee, but just for the, the, the listeners and viewers' perspective, any stories involving uh, either the cricket activities, uh, sorry, cricket activities within cricket clubs, or anything that your members are doing in response to, obviously, the current uh, COVID-19 situation. You could have heroes within your clubs 
um, alternative cricket to you with food banks and uh, food collection points, please, please get in touch with Lee. I know I can only speak from my own perspective. It's been uh, super helpful. Paul, next question and probably the, the final one for me before we go quickly into the Q&A box. Um, oh, sorry, I've got two questions. Apologies. Uh, use of images and uh, what's the thumb of raw? Do you have a raw? Not, not really. Um, I mean, in our case, we have a we have a picture editor picking out um, what they think are the, are the best pictures of the day. Really, I think it's easier these days, isn't it? In that um, uh, everybody's got a camera, and, and um, somebody could get that that great shot. But you you, you just want a, a great picture of the, of the most important thing of the day, really. Whether that's a batsman scoring a hundred, or someone taking a hat trick, or or a celebration, or something. You know, in the case of at the Oval last year in the first World Cup match when uh, Ben Stokes took that fantastic catch on the boundary against South Africa. Um, has somebody got that, that picture, really, or a good image of that? And, and you've got normally got for, at international matches, you've got photographers spotted around the ground. So, so I just think you just want a nice, clear action picture of, um, of this, the story of the day, really. And that applies as much to clubs as it does to, to the England team. Um, uh, and, and if, you, you're, if you, you're able to submit with your report, um, uh, a, a nice, a nice picture of the of the person you're talking about in the copy. So that, that illustrates it perfectly, I think. Um, so there's no hard or fast rules. Um, just nice, clean, concise pictures and uh, newsy pictures of, of of the best thing that's happened that day. Yeah, that's brilliant. And Lee, I know you're very because people do send in uh, stuff on mobile phones and stuff. What's your rule of thumb uh, from from recreation? Yeah, definitely. I mean, the more images we can get sent in from clubs, the better, as Paul's touched on. Anyone that's performed well, um, upright of, or even a landscape, really, standing by a scoreboard um, for a bit of context. Um, team shots, you know, team shots are always really good because they're going to be landscape and they will obviously represent the club. And also, you know, it might help to just send in some generic shots from around the ground, you know, the, the clubhouse, um, some signage, um, anything that, you know, by looking at, you know, dis distinctively is, is that club. So, anything that can, um, you know, support um, a story from that club uh, is worth giving some consideration to. So, but yeah, landscape um, is always a, a key rather than the uprights because uh, if it's not a landscape image, it probably won't be any good on the website. So. No, nope, that, that's good advice. I'm going to go to the Q&A box, uh, gents, one for both of you. So, Paul, if you want to go first uh, on this one, can Paul and Lee have, uh, oops, sorry, can Paul and P uh, Lee have provide any tips for a young writer uh, to hook a reader uh, in at the start of a sports article. That's from Quinton. I'm hoping Quinton trying to be a journalist, which I think is a good mm -hmm. question. So start yeah. in your report. How, how do you catch the uh, the reader? It, it is a good question. And, and I was always told, treat it like a pyramid. You know, there's obviously a big difference between journalese, as it were, and uh, an, an essay or, or a, a, a piece of written English. So you almost want to get, you know, hook the reader by doing the most interesting thing first and then build it out like a pyramid. You know, that's what I was told probably, I don't, I don't know how many years ago now, and, it, and, it's, and I think it still applies now as it, as it did then. So your intro is all important, really, Quentin. You, you, you need to say something that's going to attract the reader. If you, if you, if you don't get that right and you turn them off in, in the first par or two, then, then you're, 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 you're struggling to keep their attention. So I'm not saying it needs to be sensationalist or anything like that. And obviously there's different ways of going into something. You can get a very newsy way of getting into it, or you could have what we call a drop intro and, and, and make it a bit more featurey where you're, you're painting a picture and then you're, you're hitting them with the most relevant information a little bit lower down. But, but really you've got to, you've, you've got to make it interesting from the word go. So the most important paragraph is, is the first one. So, so put an awful lot of thought into that. And then possibly the next most important is your last one, because you've got to get a sort of payoff really. And you've got to, you've got to just have a, the final word. So, so I think it, it is very important. And, um, and, and, and I treat it like that pyramid and, 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 and try and grab their attention from the word go. Yeah, that's really good, Paul. I like that. Lee, anything to add to your own? Yeah, same. I mean, you know, it, it's what's, what's the angle? And from the very beginning, you've got to make sure. I mean, ideally, you know, head, headlines catch the eye to start off with being bigger font on the page. Um, but like Paul says, if the intro um, isn't interesting enough to start off with, then people are unlikely to sort of read further down the piece. So, yeah, make it um, a, good, a good punchy intro. Um, and keep, out, keep an eye out for the unusual as well if you're going to uh, be writing pieces. Um, you know, something, something that isn't sort of a standard procedure maybe during a match. Um, it's always handy to throw in a something a little quirky um, for the you know to entertain the reader. But as Paul says, with that pyramid, it gives you the chance to sort of flesh out further the further you go down with the other detail, um, and then yeah, and a good ending just to sort of round it up. So, 
No, that's a brilliant, brilliant analogy. I like that. Thank you, Lee and Paul. Final question from the Q and A uh, before we wrap up uh, from Len, um, and he's broken it down to four sections. But what is most popular with your readers? Uh, I, ideally, I know it's an open question, but for adults, men, women, juniors, is there is there a theme that you're trying to get across? Uh, oh, um, I mean, that can vary, I think, really. I mean, there's so many different parts to a sports section, aren't there? You know, from our point of view, in, in the mail, you, you'd, you'd have match reports um, on, on, the, on, the, on the England matches and uh, on the big, big um, football matches. Sadly, not so many county uh, matches these days. Uh, I think that applies to all papers as well um, and, and even websites, uh, not, not, not just necessarily uh, tabloids. Um, but it's getting that mixture, isn't it? So you have a match report, you'll have a quote story, you want to try and get a mixture of news and features. You want nice interviews as well. So I, I think you, you, you want to get that, that blend really and, and of knowing um, what, what the people want. And, and I think you know, in the industry, you, you'd like to think of that, that you, you people want to want their news and, and you're sort of judged by how many stories you can break. But at the same time, I think people like a good read. And in, in this this time, when this 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 whole crisis started, we wondered what we were going to fill the pages with. Uh, but we've had, um, I'm, I'm, I'm sure Lee's the same, we've had no trouble whatsoever filling the pages because um, it's, it's been an opportunity to sport, speak to a lot of different people who you wouldn't necessarily have room to, to include uh, if you were covering matches every day, and we, we all know how much international cricket there is, so that dominates our coverage. Um, and we've had no trouble at all. There's always issues. I mean, there's lots of issues in football on, on, on how they're going to come back and what have you. That dominates a lot of the coverage. But people don't want to read that, you know, at, at the expense of anything else. They want good good personalities. They want they want good good people to read about. A bit of nostalgia, maybe. Um, I've done something the last couple of days on... 30 years since Graham Gooch scored 3-3-3 um, at Lords against India, which is it's the 30th anniversary next month. And sort of anniversary journalism is quite a good one. If you find, you know, so what, what happened 30 years ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. So I had a good chat with Graham Gooch this week and, and other people involved in that match, which I'm hoping to do in the next few days. And that's, that's a real pleasure doing something like that. So in answer to the question, it's a bit long-winded answer, really. But, uh, but I think it's a variety. And you, you can't say there's any one thing that readers particularly go for. But the knack is finding out the blend that, 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 that attracts your readers in the first place. No, brilliant. I like that. Lee, anything to add to that? Yeah. Similarly, I mean, some people will still sort of say, why are there no reports in the paper anymore? And obviously, you know, space is tight and the world has changed. So with a digital age, we try to get reports online um, first and foremost. And then we try to bring something different, i.e. the quote pieces from the local club captains for the print edition. Um, and, you know, you find sometimes that they go down quite well. I mean, they will go online as well. But people will probably quite interested to see what someone's take is, is on a on a performance or on a on a match. But similarly, you know, with you know, the current sort of situation, it has been a good opportunity to engage with um, some of the characters out there and have quite you know some feedback about some of the feature pieces, some of the longer reads that we've done with some of the guys that have been playing at our local clubs for the last 30, 40, 50 years. You know, it's been nice to get on the phone to these old boys, you know, for half an hour you know hear their life story and then write sort of eight nine hundred words um about them so you know it's just something a bit different um in the absence of you know the standard sort of run-of-the-mill weekly um reports and reactions so yeah it, there's 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 different um different strokes for different folks you know so uh, all kinds of uh, coverage um probably different people um would like to do more books, you know because Hopefully, you know, mums, dads, sons and granddad uh, will invite the paper still to read about their uh, grandson or granddaughter um, playing in uh, in matches. So, um, yeah, never averse to sort of hearing about um, junior cricket either. So, uh, yeah, bear that in mind. Brilliant. And I know we've gone over time, but the final, final question, just to round it up. Uh, Paul, I'll throw it at you first. What, uh, what's your sort of rule of thumb? I don't know if you to wrap it up to any budding uh, journalists or anyone writing their first report for their local club or local press what what would what advice would you give them well in, enjoy it and 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 you know treat it as as as, as diligently and, and with as much dedication as you can um, if you're thinking about it as, as a career make sure you get a degree don't do what I did do what Lee did get a degree <laughs> so I was I was very lucky to get in without one um, so I think if, if you're thinking about doing it seriously that that's something to very much bear in mind but if you're doing it in this regard to get you know to promote your local club or to whatever just just you know always remember accuracy always remember be as concise as possible it can be it, too much enthusiasm can be a negative if you as lee said earlier if you do write a thousand words it's going to cause problems really if someone's got to go through all that to try and 
find the most interesting. Just make, make it as interesting as possible. It doesn't have to be sort of superbly written. You don't have to have a degree in English to, to, to do it. Um, but you do have to have basic, you know, good good grammar and punctuation and, and get, get as much interesting stuff in there as possible, really, and, and just broaden it out, as we say, widen it out from that scoreboard if you're doing reports for, for the local paper or, or, or for your club website or whatever and make it as, as interesting as possible. Maybe a bit of humour if you can, um, but but don't overdo that, you know, only if it works. Um, and, and, and just get as much, I, I know I've used the term human interest a few times today, but but that's, that's key, I think. Um, just paint a picture. Don't just rely on on so and so scored fifty years, so and so won the game by four wickets. You know, because that's that's a bit of a turn off. You've got to make it more interesting than that. Okay, oh, brilliant. And to wrap up, Lee from you. Yeah, um, avoid repetition. Um, make every word count, really, and obviously stick to the word count. Um, but yeah, that would be uh, just 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 give it a go. You know, don't uh, don't sort of uh, don't fear um, in some some feedback. Um, but yeah, because we've all got to start somewhere, so just just give it a go, and uh, hopefully um, you'll enjoy doing it. And uh, over a period of time, you'll improve, and uh, you won't need to edit as touch too much at the other end. Brilliant sound advice. Look, Lee and Paul, thank you so so much. I know you are relatively busy, so we do appreciate you taking time out uh, and sharing your insight and knowledge and some brilliant brilliant insight and knowledge. If I do uh, say so myself. Uh, finally, just um, to let everybody know, the next webinar we've got a slight break on Tuesday um, is is next Thursday, and that is a creating a development plan. That again is uh, back on all of our. Uh, viewers who are fed back to say um, what a good uh, development plan looks like, what structure of a development plan should look like and obviously in the current COVID-19 um, it's an excellent time just to review and reflect uh, on that as well as a club and your future planning. Uh, from all of us, thank you very much. Have a lovely rest of the evening. Thank you. Thanks, Armin. Cheers, guys. <laughs>